Hi, this is Ian O'Byrne at the University of New Haven. Uh, in looking at the online research and media skills model, what we wanted to do is initially frame it and take a look at it in context. Um, so what we want to look at is how this helps us look at Common Core State Standards and what's happening in our classroom. Uh, to give a brief overview, if you want to get a summary of what where this talk is heading, uh, but basically, literacy and technology are changing what's happening in our classroom. They're changing teaching and learning. And this model is one way to try and help Common Core and uh, new literacies or digital literacies coexist in the classroom. Uh, think about how incredible the times are that we're currently living in. Uh, there's a huge transition that's occurring. Uh, individually, on a personal level, we need to think about how these changes affect our lives. Uh, and at the same time, we're responsible for preparing our students as they go out into this world and, and grow up. And we really don't know what literacy or technology or socializing or what communication tools will have uh, our students will have when they grow up. And that's a huge challenge. Uh, one way to view, to view these challenges or these changes is to take a look at, at the reading model um, and think about reading and the different changes that occur. So if, if we look at uh, reading and, and the changes that are occurring to the reader, to the text, and to the process, it's one easy way for us to think about this across content areas, across curriculum, and across the Common Core. So on one level, there's changes that are occurring to the reader themselves. Uh, this is a colleague of mine, their bag that they bring to school every day. Um, and you can see there's an iPad, there's a Kindle, there's a track phone, there's a, a PDA. Um, and then there's also books and texts and magazines. Um, so uh, on one level, this individual, you know, a, a case size of a, a sample size of one person, but they're trying to figure out how this affects them. There's also fundamental changes that are occurring to the text. If you think about how we've advanced from, you know, cuneiform tablets and, and printing of the Bible and the Gutenberg Press, um, and then how revolutionary having a library was, how revolutionary being able to go to one uh, location and be able to access multiple texts on multiple subjects. Now think about how incredible that was. And now we live in an age where a lot of our communication and thinking and reading and, and socializing all occurs on different devices. Uh, those could be uh, mobile devices, those could be tablets, uh, and it's all hyper-connected to a global uh, library or a global network. There's also fundamental changes that are occurring to the activity of reading. Uh, so if we bring this back to a classroom context and we think about how, the f how this affects our students, let's say they go out and research something on the Scarlet Letter. Uh, they're, they're negotiating multiple sources of information, multiple websites, and they're all trying to, to go search and sift across these information sources to glean the, the greater message or the greater understanding about a topic. And so there's multiple levels of credibility and relevance in these informational sources that they're going across. There's multiple modes of information. There's images, there's video, there's a lot of multimodal content in what they're trying to read through. And that's a challenge. So, and what's also happening is students are negotiating or, or searching and sifting through these multiple informational sources in a pretty quick amount of time. Uh, you know, they're spending two, maybe three seconds deciding if they want to spend a little bit more time reading a web page. Uh, how are we preparing kids for this environment? What are we doing in our classroom right now to prepare them for this sort of learning, this, uh, this sort of reading or research? Um, and one possible way, uh, one challenge that we have is that the Common Core State Standards really don't provide any guidance or, or support for us in our classroom. I would suggest to you that these standards that we have here, the Reading Anchor Standards, these are things that we could teach in our classroom, we could address in our classroom without technology, but if we had the use of the internet and other communication tools, we can enhance or accelerate these uh, different standards. And these are a couple standards that we pulled from the Common Core Reading Anchor Standards. So we've read closely to determine what the text says and draw inferences, determine the central ideas or themes of a text and analyze development and summarize, 
And then finally, integrate and evaluate content pre presented in diverse media and formats. Uh, so this is nothing new. Uh, these are things that we want our students to be able to do. It's obviously accelerated a bit when we go online. Uh, if we think about the Common Core, let's take a look at three other standards. Uh, these are from the Writing Anchor Standards. These are things that I would suggest to you we need the use of the internet. We need the use of the internet and communication technologies in order to do these effectively in our classroom. So obviously uh, the first one use technology including the internet to produce and publish writing, uh, conduct short as well as more sustained research projects, and then the last one gather relevant info from multiple print and digital sources, assessing credibility and accuracy while avoiding plagiarism. So these are things that we definitely need the internet uh, to do in our classroom in order to say that we're effectively addressing these standards. But still, there is relatively little guidance in terms of the Common Core. There's relati relatively little room in the Common Core for the use of the internet. That's one of the reasons why I worked with a colleague of mine and, and a couple other colleagues to develop this model. Uh, this online research and media skills model and it's a way for us to regardless of what uh, literacy you know we are addressing in our classroom regardless if we're talking about new literacies or digital literacy we want to provide an opportunity to really authentically effectively utilize technology in teaching and learning and so we're going to take a look at that briefly throughout uh, this video this slide's an excellent example of too much text on the screen, uh, but basically we wanted to frame out exactly how some of this integrates into the Common Core. Uh, this is something that uh, we showed a couple slides back, and in, in more time we would go through and really debrief and see how they connect. The first level I want to take a look at is online collaborative inquiry. We define online collaborative inquiry as a group of local or global learners who arrive at a common outcome via multiple pathways of knowledge. Quite specifically, what we're talking about is students co-creating and co-constructing text, co-constructing learning together. It really is social constructivism using digital text and tools. There are a lot of different tools that are out there. Uh, I'm a big believer in free tools. Uh, free is a great price point for me. But some of the tools that we currently use uh, in order to help students or scaffold them in online collaborative inquiry, uh, one of which is Wikispaces. We use a lot of Google Docs and, and the Google Apps for educators. We also use Google Groups and now Google Communities on uh, Google+. And then also blogging tools. There's a lot of different blogging tools that are out there uh, that we can build up these skills. Once, a, once again, this is a very quick, brief overview of some of these skills. You really need to be able to take a deeper look into each of the three components, and that's what this course is all about. The next strand or the next pillar of the online research and media skills model is online reading comprehension. We define online reading comprehension as the skills, strategies, and dispositions needed to question, locate, evaluate, synthesize, and communicate info during online problem-based reading tasks. Now each one of those skills in online reading, questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communicating, is hugely challenging and hugely problematic. Uh, my colleague Lori Henry from University of Kentucky says that locating is a bottleneck skill. Uh, my entire dissert dissertation was on evaluation. And so each one of them presents their own challenges, their own opportunities for teaching in the classroom and really needs to be addressed on a granular level, that won't happen in this video. There are multiple tools out there that we use and we consider when uh, we, we focus on online reading comprehension. Please keep in mind that these tools are not specific to one of these areas. These tools could be used in any capacity. The trick is we want to think about what are the student learning objectives and how would the tool be used to help these. So some tools that we use, uh, Digo is a fantastic tool that you can collaborate and annotate websites and share with students. Google Spreadsheets and Forms have been used uh, by students to, and also teachers, to create formative and summative online assessments. Google Custom Search is a way to narrow down 
and really help students focus on individual web pages within a search. And then Evernote is a fantastic tool that I use personally to, to collect and collaborate and share notes and, and annotate uh, online informational sources and helps me research and read. Uh, and I've used it with students in the past. Once again, online reading comprehension. This is a very brief overview. It's uh, the, the purpose of this course is to dig deeper into each of these concepts. And then also I would suggest coming in for a meeting or for a workshop or developing an institute to really focus on these. The last area that we want to take a look at is online content construction. This is a, a, uh, an area that I've been developing in my dissertation and then with some colleagues. We define it as the skill strategies and dispositions needed as students construct, recreate, or remix online texts by actively encoding and decoding meaning through the use of multimodal tools. Quite simply, to me as a former language arts teacher, this boiled down to writing or the, the creation or the, the composing part of online information. Once again, we live in a fantastic time where students can, for the most part, quickly uh, create or, or read and write online informational text. They can, they can create and identify themselves in the content that they build. So there are multiple tools that are out there that we can use to do this. Uh, one of which is Google Sites. We can build online sites and put them out there. We can also use screencast tools. Uh, Jing and Screencast-O-Matic or Screener are wonderful for students creating videos and using those to create think-alouds. SoundCloud is an awesome tool that we can use to record and share and annotate audio podcasts. And then Storify is a very powerful digital tool that we can use to go on and create stories from social media services and share those out with others. So once again, uh, this is a brief overview of the three pillars of the online research and media skills model. What we're looking at is online collaborative inquiry, online reading comprehension, and online content construction. This initial video is an overview. Uh, the course that we have here at this website is basically a way to get an initial overview of these materials, but really the best way to understand how these work is to take the time and work your way through to bring uh, the, you know, figure out ways to embed the learning in what's happening in your classroom. So let's say you want to start this. My suggestion would be to work your way through the course. I'd also suggest bringing in, uh, you know, starting a new literacies institute near you or bring in some of these experts and develop exemplars around the, the ORMS model. But also, keep it simple. The, the suggested path, and this is something that I modified from Sprite, Coffin, and Dorsey, is to start with something that you currently teach and teach well, a unit or a theme or a lesson that you love, and figure out ways to embed technology on a small scale into that. And then go out and, you know, the engineering model of education, test it out. Go in, figure out a way to embed technology, test it out, see if it works, and then come back and as a healthy, reflective practitioner, think about what you just did. Did it work? Did, it, did students learn? How were the student learning objectives affected? And then finally, share. Share with your colleagues, share with your friends, go online to social networks and share some of your ideas so that others can learn from you. Once again, the online research and media skills model, online collaborative inquiry, online reading comprehension, online content construction will all be covered in this course.